Hi guys, today we are looking at a Compaq Portable. This is from 1983. It's actually Compaq's first ever device that they produced and it's an IBM compatible portable. I'm saying portable. It's 13 kilograms in weight. Anything back in the day that used to have a handle on it uh, was classed as a portable. But in today's uh, in today's terms, it's um, it's not really uh, very portable. But it has a built-in disk drive, built-in monitor, built-in keyboard. So essentially, you plug this into the mains, and it is a complete PC. This was sold in, like I said, 1983, and in their first year of production, they sold over 50,000 of these, and it. Um, got them over a hundred million dollars in revenue. So I believe that Compaq were the, uh, and still are, um, America's leading startup company. Um, you know, they, they made the most money of any startup company in their first year. And it is an IBM compatible, like I said, so much so that it would run a lot of the IBM software straight out of the box, which some of the later ones didn't. Now this one is, the, the, well the later ones they sold with a multi-voltage power supply. So it was, uh, it was 100, 110 to 250 volts. This one and all the early ones were American only. So 120 volts, 60 hertz mains input. Now I've replaced the power supply on this one. Let me just show you. So here is the power supply that was in this machine, um, and it is uh, it's not adjustable. Um, a lot of power supplies you see the little switch on the side, and you can switch it between 250 volts or 110 volts or 100 volts. This one is 120 volts only. 60 hertz uh, is the is the mains input on this and it outputs a number of voltage rails. I think it's uh, 12, 5, minus 12, minus 5. I think it's the four rails. The monitor in this machine luckily runs off 12 volts from this 12 volts DC, so there's no issue with the frequency. Um, you know, swapping this out for a 50 hertz power supply from a 60 hertz is not going to affect any of the timing or, uh, or monitor functions. This also had a mains driven fan in the box. So this is a 120 volt mains fan. So I also had to replace this. And this is something to bear in mind when you're looking at these machines for sale on eBay or other auction sites. They may say seems to be working, but there's nothing on the screen. And when they say it seems to be working, what they mean is they plug it into the mains, they switch it on, and this mains fan runs. This is uh, directly connected to the mains. So whether or not the power supply is working, the machine's working, that is, uh, that is not taken into account. All they hear is this mains fan running, and they say it should be working in actual fact. The machine is probably not working and uh, it is just this fan that's running so something to bear in mind the typical fault with these is the tantalum capacitors so on board uh, here and in fact there's some on this power supply here you can see these orange ones here these are tantalum capacitors and the issue with those when they go old is that they go short circuit now that's a good thing in this machine because if they are on a card or the main board in the machine and they go short circuit, this power supply, this little section here, uh, is a power good section. So this will first of all monitor the rails on the boards to make sure that there are no shorts. If it finds a short or it finds a problem, it won't output the voltage to this uh, to the machine. So you minimize the risk of any damage to the to the unit itself. So you may switch it on and it's completely dead, and you'll think, oh, the power supply is dead. That's not the case. Um, and if you replace it with another power supply that doesn't have this power good circuit, 
and there is a tantalum capacitor that's shorted, what will happen is you'll find that the capacitor will explode on the board. It will just uh, literally explode uh, and disintegrate. So, yeah, there's, uh, there's, a, there's a couple of good points, a couple of bad points there. So in my machine, and I'll show you this in a second, I've replaced this board with a um, just a regular AT power supply. So, you know, the, the normal uh, AT format power supply, I've taken it out of the case, fitted it into the machine. It's had the same rails on there. Uh, it also got the power good. So a lot of the new um, AT power supplies, they will have a power good signal. So I've connected that to the original power good signal out of this, connected it to the board, and that, uh, that safety feature is still intact. I'll, uh, I'll post up uh, on the screen now just the pinout of this power supply and you can see the, the rails and the signals that, that this one has. But uh, let's get this machine, um, first of all, we'll, we'll show you the machine working uh, and then we'll open it up and show you the, uh, the components inside. So we take a look around this case. Like I said, 13 kilograms, so it's not, it's not a lightweight thing, but you can see there's a handle on the top to carry it around. This is the bottom, so there's some lift out feet here. And we can set it down. Like so. This is the keyboard on the back of the machine. Again, some feet for the keyboard. And then down like so. So we've got the keyboard, we have a screen here, I think it's eight inches this screen, uh, green screen, and two five and a quarter 360k disk drives. Now this did come, later models came with a hard disk drive here, I believe it was 20 megabytes, might have been 10, fitted in here instead of one of the drives. So this particular machine does have IBM compatible accessory slots in the back, some ISA slots. So this one does have a 10 megabyte hard card in the back. When I got this machine, the keyboard was not working. Almost all of the keys weren't working. And the type of keyboard it is, is uh, known as a foil and foam contact keyboard. And what that is, it's a capacitance based system where there's a foil pad on the back of the key press. And when you press it down, it moves closer towards the contacts or the tracks on the PCB. And that um, increases or decreases the capacitance, which the computer picks up. So even though it's got a foil pad on it, it doesn't need to make an electrical connection to the tracks on the keyboard. It's, uh, it is just capacitance. So if you ever open one of these up and see the foil pads and think, oh, I'll clean the pads or clean the contacts, that's not going to actually make any difference. The, uh, the capacitance is the distance away from the actual tracks um, to the key. And the way that this is arranged is, I'll put some pictures on the screen. So there's a foil disc on the bottom of a foam pad and what happens over time 40 years as I said uh, the foam kind of dis disintegrates and uh, just turned to dust so when I opened this up it was a it was a bit of a mess but I've replaced all these uh, contacts and um, it is working fine now Texelec is the company that I got them from uh, in the United States and um, yeah it's uh, a very good product it, uh, they fit really well uh, we'll just show you round here, so I'll just show you the slots at the side. Move that round. These little doors, they are quite fragile, so if you get one of these, just be careful um, how you handle these. They just push in slightly and then slide back. So this is the slot that's taken up. So there's one, two, three, four, five slots. The first two are always occupied. So one of them is the video card, which is this one. And this one is the disk drive interface. There's an external socket here for a printer. 
uh, and it also has the disk drive interface on there as well that's the floppy disk drive um, this one has the uh, 10 megabyte hard disk drive card in there which I'll show you in a second uh, so it has two free slots around the other side this is where the power connection is so the cable is stored in this little compartment and then we have the mains input now this one i don't know if you can read that but this one still says it's um, 120 volts 60 hertz but as i said i've replaced this power supply so this is now multi-voltage power supply in this machine so we'll plug this in and show you it working So I have a boot disk here. This is MS-DOS 2.11, 360K, five and a quarter inch drive. It does take a few moments to boot up this. Even though this wasn't the hard disk model of the machine, it does have some built-in support for hard drive if you notice on the top right hand corner of the screen here you may see a little character flashing and that is indicating the access of the hard drive so this one has the hard card fitted and um, it does have the support for um, at least to display the uh, hard disk activity you'll see that on the top right of the screen in a moment there it is there it goes so this is now booted from the floppy drive. MS-DOS 2.11. Okay, uh, we can switch over to the C drive, which is the hard drive. And there is, uh, there is some software on there already. There's, uh, there's a spreadsheet and database and some other bits and pieces already on there. This was from the previous company that had this machine. But the screen is, uh, is nice, nice and bright. Both disk drives work, hard drive works. All fully working. So what I'll do is I will shut this down and we'll open up the top and just show you inside. So this top cover slides off to reveal the inside and you do need to be careful with this if you have one of these the plastics are brittle uh, over time one of the lugs on the other side the underside has already snapped off on this but you can see there are three catches three plastic catches like i said it is uh, very brittle I mean, it's 40 years old this machine so do treat it with a little bit of care if you are opening one up And we can see inside there's plenty of shielding here. This is all aluminium, I guess, to try and keep the weight down, even though it is uh, it is still a heavy weight. This section here is covering the accessory cards, this one the disk drives, this one the power supply and the monitor. So I will remove these two panels and you can see what's inside. So with the screws out, these panels lift out. One slides back. Okay, so here are our card slots. Five card slots down here. Just eight bit card slots, of course. The um, file card. This is a plus brand file card. This is uh, ten megabytes. Three and a half inch drive. And then we have the other two cards here. So this one is the floppy disk controller. You can see the ribbon cable coming over to the two five and a quarter inch drives. And this one is the graphics adapter. So there's an internal header here, which goes over to the internal monitor. Uh, Samsung tube on this one. I don't know if they all were, but this one's a Samsung tube and must be a very low use machine this um, 
because it is all very clean. Now this is the power supply. So as I was saying before, this board in here has just been lifted out of um, a normal 20 pin AT power supply, screwed into place. It was a similar size, so uh, no problem at all. Rails were transferred across to the loom in the machine. And this fan, as I said, the other fan was a, a mains driven fan. So this one is a 12 volt fan um, off the 12 volt supply on this board. And that is all there is to it. Um, if you need to replace the power supply, there's plenty of room in here. You could you could get a um, maybe a, a, a sealed um, adapter pack and drop that in there. But um, there is room uh, for an AT power supply if you just take that board out. You can uh, you can fit that straight in. So that's quite neat. Yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed a little look around this old compact portable machine. It's uh, it's quite interesting the old stuff I think. So I will get this put back together and I will see you on the next one.